Hi, I'm Quentin Tarantino, and welcome to the new Rolling Thunder video release. Uh, the film you're about to see is Beat Takashi's Sonatine, which he directed, wrote, produced, edited, and is the star of. Uh, and we were really proud to release it here in America. Actually, the film that you're about to see has um, played all over the world and has, has gotten quite a few, uh, quite quite a bit of acclaim in all the different festivals it played and everything. And, and the film is actually quite has made uh, Beat Takashi one of the you know uh, most exciting directors uh, to come out of Japan in the last decade. And I think when you see the movie, you'll understand why. It's, it's a slightly different take on uh, the standard Yakuza film. Uh, I'm going to be here after the film is over to kind of uh, talk about uh, you know what Yakuza films are and uh, what his are in particular, and just talk a little bit more about the man and, you know, just kick it. Anyway, uh, in the meantime, enjoy Sonatine, and I'll see you after the movie. Okay, bye-bye. Hi, I'm Quentin Tarantino, and welcome to the outro for Sonatine. Now let me describe a little bit um, uh, about the man you just saw, Pete Takashi, about his, his career, kind of catch you up to date with Sonatine. Um, Bitakashi is a very successful actor in Japan, uh, but he was primarily known as a comedian. <laughs> One thing you need to know about um, um, the Japanese Yakuza film is uh, it's a long-standing genre in Japan. The, the uh, Yakuza or Yakuza um, is the Japanese equivalent of the mob. The Yakuza films changed drastically in the early 70s when uh, the director uh, Kenji Hukasaku, who did the film uh, Black Lizard, which uh, uh, you might have seen, and uh, he also directed the Japanese segments of uh, Tora Tora Tora, the best segments of the movie, um, did a, a, a Yakuza film called Fight Without Jingi. Now, um, the word Jingi is a very special word in, in Japan. Japanese. Uh, there actually isn't an American equivalent for it. The closest equivalent would be honor, but Jingi is something more than that. Um, it's like a higher place of honor. Honor just doesn't quite cover it. Now, uh, Kenshi Hukasaku's film Fight Without Jingi set off a different style of Yakuza film. You know, there is no sentimentality about it. It was all rough and it was all harsh and it was all just violent and you know, there was no romanticism about it at all, all right? And that's created an entirely new wave of Yakuza films that pretty much kind of stands to this day. Which brings us now to what Beat Takashi did with them when he did Sonatine. Basically, something has happened in Japan where the main movie-going audience who decides to see a film is the women, either the wife or the girlfriend, which actually is not too different from the way it used to be in America in the 30s and 40s. I've heard Orson Welles talk about that, that it was, you know, it was the woman at home reading film fun and everything and saying, hey, let's go see the new Tyrone Power movie. And they were the ones that kind of picked, picked the movie. And the you know, husband and boyfriend kind of just went along. Well, that's the case that exists right now in Japan. So the Yakuza films haven't been doing well. And the uh, uh, samurai films haven't been doing well. What does well there is stuff like Milo and Otis. And, um, um, uh, you know, dog pictures do really well there, and um, and any kind of romantic kind of thing. It has I mean, literally the when they release a film in Japan, it has to be geared geared towards a female audience. Like the way things have to be geared towards a a 19 year old audience in America, they has to be geared toward a female audience. So even if there's like a tiny little bit of romance in a movie, you'll be a big thing on the poster of you know looks like Gone with the Wind. Um, so in this environment. <laughs> Pete Takashi came out with these three cut your head off films of full on brutality. All right, which was, you know, kind of blew everyone's mind. All right. And oddly enough, um, you know, well, actually, maybe not oddly enough, these films actually didn't do that well in Japan. They got a tremendous amount of um, uh, press. He was extremely, uh, uh, he, he was, you know, taken as one of the most exciting directors to emerge in Japan. Uh, in the, the last decade, but box office wise, they only did okay. It was the first film I had seen since I had been doing my take on gangster pictures that I was like, oh wow, this guy's kind of after the same thing I'm after. Now, um, 
if you saw the Chunky Express video, I said something like that about uh, 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 Wong Kar Wai, but it was more like about Wong, where Wong Kar Wai is coming from as far as his style and his, you know, I don't know, did I say claw? But uh, uh, as far as with a beat Takashi, it truly is, he's actually kind of going down the exact same road I'm going in his own Japanese beat Takashi way. You know, and it's like, you know, it's it's his, you know, and he's much actually much more of a minimalist than I am, which is, again, one of the things I, 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 I love about his work. And it's just that whole, the whole scene with the, the Russian roulette scene is one of the most funny and surprisingly shocking scenes I've, I've ever seen. And I think that's, uh, that, that's a true masterpiece scene. But, um, uh, but this was a, just a, like a bracing bucket of cold water in the face of uh, 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 the Japanese film industry and Yakuza films, and the critics loved it. So the film's played all over the world, has gotten all kinds of acclaim. Beat Takashi is actually the first uh, uh, Japanese filmmaker in maybe a decade to kind of uh, make a big break from Japan onto the world film scene. And so we were just really proud to uh, finally get it. So you can actually see it here in, in, in America. Uh, you know, the right subtitles, and we're just real proud of it. Also, one other interesting thing is Bitakashi is such a star in Japan that he was cast as one of the, the bad guys in the film uh, Johnny Mnemonic with uh, um, uh, Keanu Reeves. But some Japanese money went into the making of Johnny, uh, Johnny Mnemonic. And so one of the things about it was they said, okay, we're going to put some money in the film, but you have to film 15 more additional minutes with Beat Takashi for the Japanese market. So if you see like a Japanese import of Johnny Mnemonic and everything, it's like there's going to be a lot more Beat Takashi scenes because he's so famous there, which I get a big kick out of. I still haven't seen that kind of that film, so I'd like to see that someday. So that is it for uh, uh, Rolling Th this edition of uh, Rolling Thunder Video. I hope you enjoyed Sonatine. And the next film we've got coming out after this is a black exploitation film from the uh, mid '70s called uh, Detroit 9000, which the ad line in the um, newspapers when it came out was filmed in the murder capital of the USA, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, and it stars uh, Harry Rhodes and uh, Alex Rocco and Vanetta McGee, and is directed by Arthur Marks, who made us such terrific films as Monkey Hustle and um, Bucktown. So anyway. Until next time, with Detroit 9000, this is Quentin Tarantino, and thanking you for watching Rolling Thunder Video.